Good morning, and welcome to our worship of service of worship this morning. Those who are gathered here, those who are gathered in St. Andrews and Westkirk, who are hopefully following the streaming this morning, and all those gathered at home, wherever home might be. We have a number of notices, mainly about things that are going to be happening in coming weeks, because ministers always find there are more things to do in the autumn than there are weeks in which to do them. Next Sunday, being the last Sunday in October, the clocks go back. If you can't remember which way it is they go, you get an extra hour in bed. That's the thing to remember. You'll be very welcome to come here at what will then be half past nine, but you might want to wait for half past ten. Next Sunday is the Boys' Brigade enrolment service. It will be slightly different from previous years. The boys won't be here, um, and we can't link in on Zoom with them for safeguarding reasons, but we will still have an enrollment service. The captain and officers will still take their promises, and we look forward to the presentation of a Queen's badge. So if you want to come, book early, um, because there will probably be quite a number of people want to come along for that. Two weeks' time, the 1st of November, we will have our half past 10 service as usual, but we will also be putting up on the YouTube channel a pre recorded service, a memorial service. We talked about doing this earlier in the year, and then it wasn't possible because of restrictions. For those who have lost somebody perhaps in the last year, for others who want an opportunity in worship to remember others that they've lost at other times. We don't want everybody plunged into deepest grief, but a chance to give thanks, to remember, and to explore some of the, the questions that go with losses. So that will be recorded, it will go up as an additional service. And then three weeks' time, on the 8th of November, is Remembrance Sunday, and on that occasion, the service will move from half past 10 to quarter to 11, the time when we usually, or used to have services on Remembrance Sunday, so that into the service, we can mark the two-minute silence at 11. You'll be reminded of that each week until then. But for next week, it's remembering that the clocks change. Let's worship God. Let's welcome each other, whether in the same building as ourselves or in a different building or at home, and give each other a wee wave. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find these words. What does the Lord your God ask of you? Only this, to fear the Lord your God, to conform to all his ways, to love him and to serve him with all your heart and soul. Let's be quiet now in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, you are our God. Help us to recognize how much we depend on you. You have given us life and enable us to think about its meaning and purpose. You have given us the ability to choose to do what is good, what is positive, what is constructive. And you have given us the power to turn from what is hurtful and negative. In a world where there are many temptations to follow other ways, 
You have given us your word to guide us. We have the life and teaching of your son, the example of many faithful Christians, and we have the constant presence of your spirit. Yet we confess there are times we have gone astray, when we have heard voices other than yours, when we have followed ways that are not your ways, and we are sorry. Forgive us. Restore us. Your presence transforms us and our lives. With you, we need never be afraid. Nothing can separate us from your love. We have known your hand holding us fast, your steps marking out a way for us, and we long to keep knowing you, knowing you more and more. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We like to think each week of things that we could do, imagining if we had the, the Sunday school and the younger folk in. Maybe some at home can do it now. Others here, please wait till you go home. But something you could do today, if you still have coins in the house, if you haven't gone entirely over to chip and pin and electronic banking and all the rest, but you've still got some coins, find a blank sheet of paper and a pencil and rub the coins. If you can even find some really old ones, some old things like pennies and shillings and half crowns and things, just have a go at, with a pencil, at rubbing on the paper and just seeing different things. And sometimes you find out things about the penny that you don't see just from looking at it, the dents, the bumps, and so on. Are we something to do? But something to think about as well, whether here or at home. If you were chancellor or you were finance secretary, would you increase government expenditure or reduce government expenditure? Would you say, we're not going to spend so much money on this, but we'll spend that much money on that? Would you raise taxes? Would you lower taxes? Would you rearrange how the burden of taxation is shared? And finally, a wee question, when there's talk about government expenditure or taxation, is your first inclination to think, well, what's going to be best for me? How's that going to affect me? Or do you think, well, what's going to be best for the community? Even if it costs me something, it would be better if we did this. I'm not going to ask you what your answers are. They're just questions for you to think about. And now we have our action song. It's one, I don't know if you know it or not, he brought me into his banqueting house and his banner over me is love. It's got five verses. It's cold this morning, so we've got five verses to warm us up. Um, I'll ask in a wee moment, Ian, to play the tune. Could you play the tune, Ian? Uh, and then I'll do the actions, and then we can get everybody to stand up. Okay.
Okay, I'll go through each verse in turn. He brought me into his banqueting house, and his banner over me is love. We do that three times, and then his banner over me is love. Verse 2, he feeds me in his banqueting house, and his banner over me is love. Repeated and repeated. He lifts me up to the heavenly places, and his banner over me is love. Then the one that I always find tricky. There's one way to peace through the power of the cross, and his banner over me is love. How I'm going to do that with a zapper, I'm not quite sure. And then Jesus is the rock of my salvation, and his banner over me is love. If you want to stay seated, if you want nothing to do with the actions, that's fine. If you're finding the wooden pews a wee bit uncomfortable and you want to stand up, if you're feeling a wee bit chilly and you want to do some actions, this is your opportunity to stand up. Well, I put this back to verse 1, and then when we're ready, Ian will start. We won't sing, we'll just do the actions. Okay, anybody want to? Then this is your chance. We now come to our Bible reading, which is from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, and verses 15 to 22. And if I remember right, it's Joyce McEwen who is reading it this week. Our reading today is from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, 
Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Amen. Sometimes we have we reflections on what folk might have said, might have thought after something. And today is one of those occasions. What one of the disciples might have been thinking after they'd heard that exchange between Jesus and the Pharisees. I don't know why they're asking Jesus about paying taxes. It's not as if he's got much money. Well, I do know really they're trying to trap him. If he says, no, Jews shouldn't pay taxes to the Roman authorities, they'll denounce him as a rebel, a terrorist, a threat to public peace. If he says, yes, they'll denounce him for collaborating with the occupying power. Damned if you do, and damned if you don't. None of us like paying taxes. Who gets up in the morning and says, oh, please, 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 I want to give some of my hard-earned pay to the government? On the other hand, governments have the power to make positive changes for the good of us all. They can improve things like roads, the water supply, drainage. They could help unemployed people find work. They could provide assistance for the poor, the widow, and the fatherless, people who are struggling to survive. They could ensure that we're safe from threats at home and abroad. No more muggings on the Jerusalem to Jericho Road. Peaceful travel between Galilee and Judea. But what do the authorities in Jerusalem, Jewish and Roman, do with all the money they get? line their own pockets. I heard Jesus say something along the lines of, to every person who has something, even more will be given, and they will have more than enough. But the person who has nothing, even the little that they have, will be taken away from them. Need I say more? The whole system of paying taxes is a mess. Look at that guy, Zach, we met in Jericho, or even Matt standing over there. They enter a contract with the government to raise so much tax, and it's left up to them to decide how to do it. There's nothing in the contract about covering their costs or giving them a reasonable return. They can charge the taxpayers what they like. Let's say they have to raise 20,000 denarii. That could be 200 people paying 100 each. If they were allowed a 5% markup to cover costs, we might be asked for 105 each. But in practice, we're more likely to be charged 150, 200, or 300. It might be legal, but it's not right. I don't think Jesus is an anarchist who wants to do away with government as a feature of life. Rather, I think he sees it as a part of God's plan for the world. 
providing safety and security for people to improve their quality of life and provide a safety net when people need help. I don't think he sees a division between loyalty to God and loyalty to country and government. Rather, he sees the state, its leaders and its structures, all countries and their societies, all individuals, being accountable to God for their actions. But all are expected to live by his values and standards. Listening to Jesus answering those questions from the Pharisees, I think he's better than a political leader could ever be at dodging the awkward questions and yet making his point. Amen. Let's be quiet again in prayer and bring to God our thoughts and our prayers for others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are involved in planning public expenditure and taxation at international, central, or local government level. May they be inspired to strive for your priorities by your values. We pray for the situations around the world, especially in poorer countries, where there is widespread corruption and political leaders siphon off public money or international grants for their own purposes. We pray that in all areas where money is involved, trade, business, finance, scams, money laundering, theft, bribery, blackmail, your values and your standards may prevail. We pray for all who are ill, those who look after them, and those who worry about them. Those waiting for or receiving treatment. And those for whom there is no treatment. Those who are lonely, feeling down, or grieving a friend or loved one. Those who are worried about home, work, or money. A friend or a relative those who are living with the after-effects of natural disasters, those who do not have enough money, to, who do not have enough to eat, do not have somewhere to call home, <clears throat> those who long to live in peace and safety, those who have fled from their homes <clears throat> seeking safety, We pray for the Queen, the government, for all in positions of leadership in this and in every land. We pray for your church, for our own congregation, the wider church in Dumbarton, the worldwide church. We remember those whose names are included on the prayer trees in our churches. We bring to you our prayers for people and situations of special concern to us. We may not bring forward a plate to place on the table. We may be paying towards the church by some other means. But at this time, we dedicate our gifts, we dedicate ourselves to you. 
Take them, take us for your glory through Christ our Lord. And we sum up all our prayers in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. In a wee moment, we'll close our service with the blessing. If you wish to stand for the blessing, you're very welcome so to do. If you would rather remain seated, that's fine. After the service finishes, those in that aisle could make their way out that way, and those this aisle could make your way out this way. Please don't linger in the street in case we cause congestion. There is some space. It's not awfully warm, um, but if you want to see people without mingling um, in the car park, that's fine. So if you would like to, to stand, if you don't have to, for the blessing. God the Father sends you out to be his witnesses wherever you go, to work to bring healing and wholeness in all you do. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you today and every day and forever. Amen.